Hi friends, it's Mrs. Walker. Today for our lesson, we're going to talk about time and using a number line and a clock to be able to find the time and intervals of time. So our learning goals for today say, I can skip count by fives on a clock to tell the time to the nearest five minutes, and I can skip count by fives on a number line to tell the time to the nearest five minutes. So let's jump in and see what materials we need for our lesson. First, you're going to need a dry erase board and a marker, and then you're going to need a clock like this. So make sure that you grab those before we get started. Okay, here we go, friends. All right, so here's our first problem. We're gonna talk about this problem and we're gonna use a tape diagram to solve this problem because we've been using tape diagrams so we know all about that. We're pros with tape diagrams now. So here's our problem. It says Christine has 12 math problems for homework. It takes her five minutes to complete each problem. How many minutes does it take to Christine to finish all 12 problems? So what do you guys think our tape diagram would look like? Here's what I think. Remember, we're going to start with our tape diagram, and then we're going to break it up into 12 equal parts because there's 12 math problems. So we're just going to speed forward. Oh, boy, I'm fast at drawing tape diagrams, aren't I? <laughs> okay, so now that we have this, we're going to model this as our 12 math problems, okay? Because remember, when you're using tape diagrams, it's important to label the different parts. So now that we know that each problem takes five minutes to complete. So I'm gonna fill that in on my tape diagram too. Each one is five minutes. Now, the question is asking me, how many minutes does it take to finish all 12 problems? Well, so far I haven't figured that out, but I'm gonna count by fives to be able to figure that out because each part of my tape diagram is five and each problem takes five minutes. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Oh, goodness. I think we just solved our problem, friends. So how many minutes does it take for Christine to solve 12 problems? Hey, you got it. 60 minutes. So it takes Christine 60 minutes to finish all 12 problems. So now we're going to take this and we're going to use what we already know with tape diagrams and we're going to transfer that knowledge to using a number line to model these intervals of time. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to draw my number line. Okay, I'm going to draw it right underneath the tape diagram that I already have. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to represent the same lines that I have in my tape diagram. Notice how they're going to line up nice and neat for us. So here's the first one, okay, and so on until we get all the way down to the end. And my numbers and my lines actually line up pretty close on my number line. So now I'm going to label those. So there's zero minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So how long would it take Christine to solve seven problems? So the way that I could figure this out is I could kind of do some jumping on my number line, okay? So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go for seven problems. So here's one problem, two problems, three problems, four problems, five problems, six problems, seven problems. So how many minutes does it take to be able to solve seven problems? Yeah, 35 minutes. You know, one thing I forgot, it was so silly when I did this. In here, we should have labeled underneath our tape or underneath our number line, we should have numbered that, labeled that as minutes. So don't forget to label your number lines too, okay? All right, so now we're gonna keep going with this and we're gonna label another tape diagram from zero and we're gonna count up to 60 as we go through. We're gonna count up to 60 because there's 60 minutes in one hour. So I'm gonna model this as one hour on my tape die, or I'm sorry, my number line. So I have 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, so as I do that, remember there's 60 minutes in an hour. So that's why I have each one of those little five minute intervals. Remember too, friends, that an interval is the time that's in between. So you're not counting the lines for your intervals. Your intervals are the spaces in between. 
Okay, so we start recess at 1.10. So here on my tape diagram is 1 o'clock. So this would be 1, 105, and then 1.10 would be right here. Okay, I want to label this an R for recess so I know that the first red dot is going to be her recess because we're going to plot something else on this number line too. So we start science at 135. So let's plot that on our number line too. So we're already at 110 here. So 115, 120, 125, 130, 135. Okay, so that's how you can plot those times on your number line. Oh, don't forget to label it with an S for science. Okay, so now we've kind of taken a peek. Let me take a step back. We've taken a step, our uh, peek at how we can do and model time on a number line. Well, now I want to switch that to our analog clock. And how do you think that number line that we just made is similar to an analog clock? What do you think? Yeah, I heard somebody say that when you wrap a number line, you could take it and you could kind of like wrap it all the way around this clock and it would be the same as the clock. So your number line can be used to represent the minutes on the clock to show that as well. So we start at zero on the number line, but a clock doesn't have a zero. So what's the starting point on the clock? Go ahead and point to it. Did you point right here? Because if you did, you got it. So the 12 o'clock for the minute hand represents zero starting over with our minutes. So zero minutes as we go through. How many five minute intervals show 15 minutes on a clock? Hmm. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna count around by fives to get to 15. So I would count five, 10, 15. Now I have four dots on my clock to kind of represent where I started and where I ended. But remember, that's not the interval. The interval is the space in between. So we wanna count how many five minute intervals there were. So here's one, two, three. So there are one, two, three, three five minute intervals on a clock that show 15 minutes. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we start recess at 110. Let's plot that on our clock. Ah, so here's 110. So remember the hour hand is going to be closer to the one because the hour is one o'clock. And then we're going to find 10, which is our minute hand, which is the long one that goes all the way around. And you can count by five. So we'll start with zero, five, 10. So this represents 110 on the clock. You're going to use your clock to plot when we start science. So model on your clock what 135 looks like. Go ahead and pause the video so you have time to do that. Okay, so here's what 135 looks like on the clock. Now notice how my hour hand changed more in the middle kind of between the one and the two hour because we're more than halfway through it. So the hour hand has to change. It's not going to stay straight up on the one o'clock. Okay, so remember that when you're going through. And notice how we just counted around by fives like we did on our number line. So 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, so this represents our science time of 135. All right, well done, friends. Okay, so you guys did an awesome job using number lines and clocks to be able to tell time to the nearest five minutes. So he, please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete next for your independent practice. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.